the India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. This is nothing but historic. This is a big deal. This is a real big deal. Plans to build a historic transport corridor that would link India to Europe via Israel and the Middle East. The India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. The EU Middle East India Corridor. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to the India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor, an audacious venture that promises to rewrite the script of international trade and connectivity. A corridor that unites the powerhouse of India, the oil-rich Middle East, and the economic behemoth of Europe. The corridor was announced on the grandest stage of all, the 2023 G20 India Summit. Think of it as the Suez Canal of the 21st century, but on steroids. The sheer magnitude of this initiative is enough to make even the most established trade routes sit up and take notice. But you may ask... Why now? The answer lies in the winds of change that have been sweeping the geopolitics of the Middle East, the rise of India as an economic powerhouse, and the ever-evolving dynamics of global trade. Let's fasten our seatbelts, for we're embarking on a journey through the corridors of ambition, politics, and prosperity through the lens of India-Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. Chapter 1. What is IMEEC and why do we need it? Throughout history, trade routes have been the lifeblood of nations. From the Silk Road that connected the East and West to the spice trade routes that fueled empires, geography has often dictated prosperity. The world's trade volume has surged by over 300% in the last two decades alone. The global trade volume in 2020 was a staggering $17.9 trillion. But with the ever-increasing volume of global trade, Existing routes like the Panama and Suez canals are strained to their limits, and bottlenecks at these critical choke points have the potential to disrupt the entire global supply chain. Geopolitical tensions in regions like the Strait of Hormuz add to the uncertainties, impacting the energy security of nations. With this backdrop, the need for a robust, reliable and diversified trade corridor becomes paramount. IMEEC the India-Middle East Europe Economic Corridor emerges as the solution to these pressing challenges. The IMEEC route snakes its way through India, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Israel, Greece, and onward to Italy, France, and Germany. A network of railways coursing through the heartlands of India, traversing the Arabian Peninsula, and culminating in the harbours of Europe, these rails will be flanked by maritime arteries, with ports like Haifa in Israel and Kalamata and Kavala in Greece acting as vital nodes. The Abraham Accords of 2020 laid the foundation of the corridor by normalizing relations between Israel and the UAE, opening up new vistas for regional cooperation. Then, in 2021, the I2U2 alliance emerged, uniting India, Israel, UAE and the US, bolstering economic ties and setting the stage for this ambitious venture. Now let's talk about the cast of characters behind this magnum opus. India, with its burgeoning economy and strategic location, is the linchpin. The UOE and Saudi Arabia, pivotal players in the Gulf, lend their weight, providing access to the riches of the region. And let's not forget Israel, a nation in the midst of a paradigm shift in its regional relations. The European heavyweights, France, Italy, Germany, and the European Union itself also bring their economic heft to the table. Lastly, the United States, with its diplomatic prowess and financial muscle, solidifies the backbone of this colossal enterprise. Chapter 2. The Significance With the IMEEC in play, estimates suggest a boost of up to 3% in the GDP of all the participating countries. That's not just growth. It's a seismic shift in economic landscapes. Let's pivot to energy. The Gulf, home to nearly half of the world's oil reserves, emerges as the backbone of the corridor. For India, a nation that requires humongous amounts of energy to progress, this would mean access to cheap energy in the least amount of time. 
This would also mean a 35% reduction in transportation costs and a whopping 45% drop in transit time for Indian exports to the Middle East and Europe. For the Middle East, this corridor would mean a surge of $300 billion in regional GDP and creation of over a million new jobs. The Middle East, traditionally an oil-centric economy, is poised for diversification, and the IMEEC is the catalyst. And now, we turn our gaze to Europe. IMEEC will bring a 30% boost in connectivity and a 25% surge in efficiency in intra-Europe transport of goods. What's interesting is approximately 75% of the physical infrastructure for the corridor is already in place. But then, what's the game changer? The answer lies in customized infrastructure, tailored to meet the colossal demands of this corridor. Companies like Adani Group, Larsen & Tubro, and GMR Group have boldly stepped forward and are poised to bid on projects that will transform the Middle East. At the heart of this transformation lies the Haifa port, a critical linchpin in the corridor's operations. Snatched from China by India's Adani Group with help from the USA, this port is strategically positioned, serving as a gateway to the corridor, a testament to the audacity of this vision. Another important piece, the Oman UAE Railway Network project is also going to be developed soon. This audacious blueprint aims to revolutionize commerce, uniting Asia with Europe. Chapter 3. The Opposition In the shadows of IMEEC lurk some formidable opponents, each with their own strategic concerns and vested interests. Let's uncover them one by one. Russia, the Eurasian Colossus, eyes the IMEEC with a mix of apprehension and calculation. Russia, since the Second World War till the Ukraine invasion, remained the dominant energy supplier to Europe. With the IMEEC corridor, Europe's gates will be even more open for Middle East's cheap energy. The corridor challenges Russia's monopoly on transit routes and its energy customers. Next up, China, the orchestrator of the Belt and Road Initiative. The Dragon views the IMEEC as a cheap replica of its BRI. Next, we have the Middle Eastern powers who are often embroiled in their own complexities, but now find themselves at the heart of a new global crossroads. The corridor brings potential economic windfalls, but also exposes them to new vulnerabilities. Consider the long-standing Saudi-Iran rivalry. The corridor, passing through the Arabian Peninsula, could either serve as a bridge for dialogue or ignite existing tensions. Lastly, we have Turkey, a keystone between Europe and Asia. Turkey has historically positioned itself as a vital transit hub between Europe and Asia. The IMEEC could potentially divert traffic away from Turkish ports and transportation routes. Chapter 4. The Future As we cast our gaze toward the future of the India-Middle East Europe economic corridor, the stakes couldn't be higher. For a moment, envision that IMEEC succeeds. This would translate to trillions of dollars coursing through this colossal artery, resuscitating economies from slumber, generating millions of jobs, and propelling nations into an era of unparalleled prosperity. Much like the Silk Road of antiquity, this corridor would be a conduit of wealth, knowledge, and culture. Countries that were once distant dots on the map would become nodes in a vast network of shared interests and mutual growth. For India, it'd be the dawn of a new era, a chance to reclaim its historical role as a bridge between East and West. Success would mean an economic renaissance that lifts millions of Indians from poverty. For the United States, it's a gambit to exert influence, to challenge the dominance of other global players. For Europe, It'd mean economic resurgence, bringing back the glorious past, fortifying the EU on the world stage. For the Middle East, it'd mean well-diversified economies, reducing reliance on finite resources. Now let us dare to peer into the abyss of potential failure. Consider the staggering loss. Trillions of dollars evaporated, investments reduced to ashes, and aspirations buried beneath the rubble of shattered hopes. The geopolitical chessboard would then be rewritten, alliances strained, rivalries exacerbated. The corridor that promised unity could become a tinderbox of division. 
As we stand at the crossroads, the path ahead is fraught with both peril and promise. The question that lingers is whether this corridor will be the conduit of a new dawn or the crucible of unforeseen tempests. Only time will tell.